Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic. Coming up this week, I answer your questions on group set compatibility, gearing choices, and greasy black chains. Don't forget though, if you have a question that you would like answered on the Tech Clinic, drop it in the comments box below, either on this show or any of the other weekly shows, using the hashtag AskGCNTech. All right, up first this week is Chris Hayes, who has a question about gearing. He's riding a Cube Listening with a 5339 SRAM Red group set on it. Next year, he's riding London to Paris and wants to know what the best way to get a compact group set is basically on there. So he wants to know, is a 39 ring on the front the smallest you can go on a 130 BCD, the bolt diameter centers on the front chain ring? And the answer is, unfortunately, a 39 is as small as you're gonna get on that, on that crank set. The invention of 110 BCD came about because people were after smaller gearing. You can drop down to a 34, I think, on a 110 BCD, possibly even smaller, I'm not 100% sure on that. But that gives you a whole wide range of gearing that you can use then, and you can still use a 52 as well, or even a 53 or four on the front, meaning that it is probably the best way to change your gearing. Um, Alternatively, you could perhaps use a larger cassette on the back. If you've currently got like a 25 or a 28, going up to a 30 or 32 will provide you with a little bit extra gearing, although it won't be quite as big a change as going down to a 34 or 36 on the front. Good luck and let us know what you choose to do in the end. Tran Luang, how can I get rid of the black greasy chain? Is it because of the lube I'm using? Well, yes, it probably is. Now for a start, if you're using a wet lube, these do tend to be that little bit thicker. And because they're thicker, they also attract a lot of dirt and other contaminants to stick to them. It's also possible that you're probably using just that little bit too much lube. So what we recommend is that you completely degrease your chain. We've got a video that's gonna pop up on your screen in just a second on how to do that, really in depth, and you'll definitely have a nice shiny chain again. And then when it comes to re-oiling your chain, it's only the little rollers that you actually need to oil, not the plates in between. So one drop per roller, and that'll keep the chain nice and clean, and then reapply it and wipe off every now and again. Good luck with that. Krishna Villa up next. Good day, John. Love the show and learn so much. My question this week is simple. Will mechanical disc brake shifters work with mechanical rim brake calipers? And the very quick and easy answer is yes. They are, mechanically speaking, the exact same shifter and the pull ratios will be the same across both of them, meaning that you can definitely use either a rim brake or a disc brake for the same lever. Next up is James F. Hello, love watching the show. Just wondered if you can help me with gear ratios, please. Currently riding a Giant Propel Advanced Pro 1 with a 5236 front mech and 1130 rear setup, but never uses the small ring. That's a luxury problem to have, isn't it? Just wondering if you can recommend a better ratio rear cassette so I can stop cross-chaining. Well, that's an interesting question. If you've got that uh, 1130 on the back, you could consider running a 2511 on the back or 1125, depending on how you want to phrase that. Meaning you won't have quite as many gears on the back, but you'll have closer ratios ratios, which will be much more comfortable when you're out on the bike, but it's almost guaranteed to force you into the little ring as well, because you're effectively missing like a, what, a 27, a 29 or a 30, you know, you're missing either two or three cogs on the back there, giving you a better spread of gears when you're in that fast position as well. Enjoy that one. Next up is a question from Tom Glister. Hello, John. Great show. I'm always looking to try and save a little money where I can. Have two road bikes with Shimano 10 speed group sets and Durace 105. Is nine speed or 11 speed chainring compatible with his 10 speed group sets? Well, my answer would be to go for the 11 speed chainring because it's got a slightly narrower gauge. Yes, it will work. It may not be quite 100% perfect as they're not designed to work with each other in the way that you might expect or hope. Basically, the more teeth or the more gearing you're after, so nine, 10 or 11, the narrower the gauge gets of all the components. So if you want to run something with a 10 speed chain, you have to go for the slightly slimmer one rather than go for the nine speed one, which is potentially gonna prize your chain out over the use of its life. Good luck with that. 11 speed. Moisha Yehunda. I want to turn my 2012 Trek 8.2 into a gravel bike. I've everything figured out, but I don't know what to do about the front fork. Currently, it's a 60 millimeter super squishy suspension fork, but I want to ditch the awful suspension for something more road worthy. Will putting a normal fork on alter the geometry too much? If yes, what should I do? And if not, what type of fork do I recommend? Well, I can't make any direct recommendations because I'm not 100% sure of exactly the sort of geometry that you're trying to get, but you can absolutely buy geo adjusted forks. So these are forks that's, which have been designed to fit into bikes that were made with suspension and they effectively make the, the legs of the fork that little bit longer, which props up the front of the bike, maintaining the geometry that you want to have whilst the suspension is not compressed. So imagine you've got, a, I don't know, a 69 degree head angle and your forks need to be around 445 millimeters from axle to crown. These longer forks are designed to do just that and keep them in that nice position, leaving you with that correct head angle. Simply swapping for a pair of standard forks may not work. So you wanna look for the, adjust, the geo adjusted forks. It's not too hard. If you have a little search online, you'll have plenty of options that are available to you. 
Nithi now with a question, and you'll notice I've not even attempted the surname. Hello John, love the section. How much do I need to adjust the brake calipers if I swap the wide rim carbon wheel set to the traditional narrow aluminium ones? So that's going from 26 down to 20 mil for training. Great idea, you should definitely be swapping your wheels. I would only say if you are going from aluminium rims to carbon wheels, you need to make sure you're taking out your brake pads as well and swapping them for specific ones. Because if you go onto a set of carbon wheels with the aluminium brake pads, they're gonna have little bits of stone, little bits of metal and all sorts of contaminants in there which are not good for your carbon wheels whatsoever and will slowly destroy them, I promise. But when it comes to adjusting your brakes, which is the question you're asking, I would use the barrel adjuster. So the little, the little barrel, it literally is a barrel on top of the, in the middle of the cable on top of your caliper. Adjust that two or three turns between each one should be about enough. You could also use the clamp on the side, but you know, that's a slightly more drawn out process and it's less finite how much you can adjust it. Check out the video on your screen right now. It will give you a much more in-depth explanation. That is all we have time for this week. Don't forget, if you have a question you would like answered on the Tech Clinic, drop it down in the comments below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Give this video a big thumbs up if you found it useful, if you enjoyed it, or if you learned something. For more content, click just over there. And don't forget, this is your last chance to get your introductory offer for the GCN Contrast Ranger clothing. Shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. <laughs>